Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel where I teach you the basics of mechanical engineering. Friends, today we are going to discuss the design procedure of hydrodynamic journal bearings. Friends, you have to use a data book in order to study this topic. Here I am explaining the basic design procedure in a step by step manner. You can choose any data book to see the important design data. So without wasting any time, let's start the topic. First of all, see the objective of the problem. So we have to see the objective of the problem. So what is our objective? Here our objective is to find the length of the bearing LB, the minimum fluid film thickness denoted by H min. That is we have to find this LB and the H min. And also we have to find out the viscosity of the lubricant denoted by a mu lub so we have to find this mu also also we have to select a suitable lubricant for the problem we have to find out the radial clearance denoted by small c and lubricant flow rate also so we have to find out this is small c also and the lubricant flow rate also on the right side of the screen you will see the figure of a hydrodynamic journal bearing so this is the figure of a hydrodynamic journal bearing here r is the radius of the journal and rb is the radius of the bearing and the radial load f radial is acting vertically downward and here h min is the value of minimum fluid film thickness now see what is the journal data which is required to us or which will be given in the problem so this is the journal data which will be given to us okay friends so here d journal is the uh, diameter of the journal of the bearing n is the rpm of the journal that is the speed in revolution per minute of the journal and f radial is the radial load acting on the bearing and sometimes the application for which we are going to design the bearing is also given to us now let's start the step by step procedure Step number one. In first step, we have to assume suitable value of ratio of length of the bearing to the diameter of the journal. Generally, this L by D ratio varies between 0.5 to 2. This ratio varies from 0.5 to 2. We assume L by D ratio greater than 1 when long bearing is required to carry higher load application. And we assume L by D ratio smaller than 1 when short bearings are required which has good heat dissipation and can be operated at low load. So L by D ratio is greater than 1 is chosen when long bearing is required and L by D ratio smaller than 1 is chosen when short bearings are required. According to our application we have to choose the L by D ratio. Now we calculate the length of the bearing lb using this l by d raise here which is chosen by us because diameter of the journal is given to us in the problem so here diameter of the journal is provided to us in the problem so we can easily calculate the length of the bearing from the assumed value of l by d ratio now friends let us come to the step number two we have to calculate the unit bearing pressure as ratio of radial load to projected area of the shaft see on the screen the step number two here the unit bearing pressure is calculated using this formula okay friends now let us come to the step number three once you get the value of unit bearing pressure check the value of it with the value of unit bearing pressure specified for various application in the design data book here I have mentioned a, a sample table on right side which shows the value of unit bearing pressure for some applications. So see on the right side these are the application and the unit bearing pressure limits are given here. If the value of unit bearing pressure come out to be greater than the value of the unit bearing pressure as shown in the table for the various application then you have to to again go to the step number one and assume a greater value of L by D ratio 
and after that you have to again calculate the value of unit bearing pressure and again check it with the table shown on the, with the table shown on right side of the page until the value of unit bearing pressure comes under the range specified in table suppose our application is machine tool application and we have to design the bearing for machine tool application then the value of unit bearing pressure must lie between 2 to 1 okay friend 2 to 1 mega pascal so this is the value of unit bearing pressure so our unit bearing pressure must lie between 2 to 1 otherwise we will go to the step number 1 and again choose the value of L by D ratio and find out the unit bearing pressure again and again see the value if it lies in the range according to the specified application now come to step number 4 In the step number four sorry friend this is step number four actually i have written here step number three but this is step number four and this is step number five okay friend calculate the radial clearance c the value of c for practical application is shown on screen and also c depends on material of bearing so it can be obtained from design data book where you will see the value of C in terms of radius of journal for the various bearing materials. So the value of C can be calculated using this expression where RJ is the radius of the journal and also uh, the value of C can be obtained from the design data book according to the bearing material. The value of C varies and it varies according to the radius of the journal and it can be chosen from the design data book also so in this step we can calculate the value of c once the value of c is calculated by us the next step is to finding out the minimum fluid flame thickness value so we have to find out the value of minimum fluid flame thickness and the value of minimum fluid flame thickness can be find out using this relation okay friends once the value of minimum fluid flame thickness is find out then we can again go to the step number 5 and we have to calculate the L by D ratio and H min by, ratio, H min by C ratio. The value of L by D ratio can be taken from the this step. Okay friend, this is the L by D ratio which we have already assumed. And the value of H min by C ratio can be calculated using the step, this step and this step. See on the screen here from... Here we will take C and from here we will take H min. So the value of H min by C ratio can be calculated. Once the value we have obtained the value of L by D ratio and H min by C ratio, then we have to go to the design data book and see the table for performance parameter for full journal bearing having side flow. In our design data book, we will see the table like the one whose sample is shown in step number six. You have to search this table in the design data book. Here S0 is summer field number. Here S0 here is summer field number. Now corresponding to the L by D ratio and H min by C ratio as calculated from the step number 5 that is this step. As calculated from the step number 5 the value of L by D ratio and H, H min by C ratio uh, what we have to do? We have to look for the bearing parameters and select them accordingly okay friend so if the value of the l by d ratio and h min by c ratio is suppose 1 by 2 and here we can see from the value of h min by c ratio come out to be 0 0.95 if the value of l by d ratio is 1 by 2 and h min by c ratio is 0 0.95 then we can choose the value of S0, the summer field number, as 4.4. And once the value of this summer field number is chosen 4.4, then what we have to do? We have to calculate the viscosity of the lubricant. Now, how we, we will calculate the viscosity of the lubricant? Corresponding to L by D ratio and H min by C ratio, we have calculated the value of S0 from this table which will be available in your data book which it is a very long table you have to see for this table in your data book now 
the value of s not is obtained corresponding to this l by d and h min by c from the table and we know the value of n the rp of the journal which is the given data and we know the value of radius of journal and the radial clearance we have already calculated from the step number 3 and the unit bearing pressure we have already calculated from the step number 2 we can easily calculate the value of mu loop that is the viscosity of the lubricant once the viscosity of the lubricant is calculated by us using the formula in step number 6 Net next step is the step number 7 we have to find out the rise in temperature of the lubricant using the formula shown in the step number 7 also in this formula P unit is already calculated by us in step number 2 and CFP that is the coefficient of flow parameter and FE the flow parameter have to be find out from the table of performance parameter explained earlier okay friend this CFP and FP the coefficient of flow parameter and flow parameter we have to calculate corresponding to the value of L by D ratio and H min by C ratio which we have calculated earlier so the value of flow parameter corresponding to the value of L by D ratio 1 by 2 and H min by C ratio 0 0.95 is 3.4 here and the coefficient of uh, flow parameter is 86 so friends what we have to do we have to put this value of CFP and FP from this table okay friends corresponding to L by L by T and H min by C into this formula so we can calculate the rise in temperature of the lubricant now once the rise in temperature of the lubricant is calculated the next step is to find the average temperature using the relation in step number 8 shown uh, the relation the step number 8 shows the relation for finding the average temperature here T inlet is the inlet temperature of the lubricant and the delta T is the rise in temperature of the lubricant so by using this relation we can easily find out the average temperature of the lubricant now the next step is selecting a suitable lubricant now select a suitable lubricant as I am explaining to you in graph shown on right this is the graph shown on the right side of the page using this graph we will select the suitable lubricant for our application it is available in many data books actually this graph is available in many data books if this graph is not available in the data book then there will be a table available showing the relationship between the viscosity and the average temperature from there you have to choose a suitable lubricant for your general bearing application corresponding to the average temperature and the viscosity of the lubricant you have to choose the lubricant so we have to take this value of average temperature and the viscosity of the lubricant calculated in the step number 6 and the average temperature calculated from the step number 8 corresponding to these two values that is the average temperature and the viscosity of the lubricant you have to choose a particular value suppose the average temperature is coming up to be 50 degrees celsius and the viscosity of the lubricant is coming out to be equal to 200 centipoise then we can choose by interpolate uh, by exaggerating these line that is uh, drawing this line horizontally and from there this vertical line where they meet they are meeting at a uh, oil which is having a designation SAE20 so this oil will be chosen by us okay friends so we have selected the oil for our application now the next step in the next step what we have to you what we have to do we have to calculate the shear stress due to friction by applying the in clearance space the Newton law of viscosity so in clearance space we have to apply the Newton law of viscosity to find out the shear stress due to friction so shear stress due to friction tau f can be find out tau f is equal to mu lubricant v by c where v is the surface velocity of the shaft is given by pi d diameter of the journal into n rpm of the journal divided by 60 and c is the radial clearance as obtained from the step number 3 ok friends so this is according to the Newton law of viscosity we can find out the shear stress due to friction tau f now come to the next step that is the step number 11 in this step what we have to do we have to calculate the frictional torque so 
find the frictional torque acting on the general surface due to lubricant using relation given here tau f value can be taken from the step number 10 here tau f value can be taken from the step number 10 which we have already calculated and this is the surface area of the journal so this surface area multiplying the tau f to the area we will get the frictional torque using this formula now the next step the step number 12 we have to calculate the power lost in the friction so the formula of power lost in the friction can be given as 2 pi n t divided by 60 where n is the rpm of the shaft t is the torque okay friends so this torque can be given as the product of the frictional force acting on the shaft due to the viscosity of the lubricant and diameter of the general divided by 2. So putting this value in this formula and n is already given to us in the data by the problem. So we can calculate the power. So once the power is calculated, the next step is to calculate the lubricant flow rate. So power lost in the friction is can be equated to the heat dissipated to get the lubricant flow rate. How? Power is equal to mcp delta t where m is equal to mass flow rate of the lubricant and obtain we have to obtain this delta t from the step number 7 okay friend so the power is equal to rho q cp delta t this is the heat dissipated and this is p is the power loss in the friction so this particular equation can give, give us the lubricant flow rate now friends once uh, we have gone through the step number 13 uh, the other parameter that is the maximum pressure of the fluid film and the leakage side leakage of the lubricant we have to calculate so for that i will show you the step and uh, the step lies in this table okay friends so according to the l by d ratio and h min by c ratio we have to choose the value of p unit by p max suppose this is coming up to be 0 0.53 so we have calculated the value of p unit that is the unit bearing pressure from step number two so we can use this value of p unit and equating this ratio p unit by p max is equal to 0 0.53 we can easily calculate the value of maximum fluid flame pressure and uh, after that if we want to calculate the side leakage that is given by q l e a key we have to uh, see this ratio corresponding to this value of 1 by 2 and 0 0.95 that the value of h min by c and l by d we have to equate q leak by q l to 0 0.172 where q l is the lubricant flow rate that we have calculated in the last step that is this step we have calculated the lubricant flow rate okay friend here cp is the heat capacity of the lubricant so from here q this is q actually it is equal to ql okay friends that is the lubricant flow rate once we have calculated the lubricant flow rate by equating the power here then we have to go to this table and corresponding to these two values we have to see the value of q leak by ql and equate it equal to 0 0.172 which is corresponding to these two value of uh, per these two parameter then we have to calculate the q leak because ql can be taken from the last step as explained by me in the last slide that is this here we can this is ql we can take ql from here and uh, put it here and we can calculate the q leakage so friend this is the whole procedure for the design of the general bearing also friends other parameter like maximum fluid flame pressure and the side leakage can be obtained from the table of performance pa parameter as i have already shown you so friends this is the end of the topic i hope you have enjoyed the video friends at, friends at last i want to request you to subscribe my channel and press the bell icon for upcoming info informative videos so thank you friends stay positive and stay healthy friends